This is Leadership Video, brought to you by Utah Video and Video Church. We want to take a look at leadership in a different light. We want to examine some of the things that Tozer has mentioned in his viewpoint of being peculiarly called by God to speak and address certain issues that go on in the church. But we also want to look at some of the Barry Warner leadership principles, you know, bird dog versus hound dog or kind of those things that if you've ever read some of the video devotionals or devotionals, then you know that we're very big on some of the leadership principles that are out there that we can bring to you and hopefully provide you with some opportunities to develop your skills when it comes to being a leader. Now, God really doesn't look at leadership the way we do. He actually would prefer that we were not skilled in leading as much as we were probably yielding to serving and being led by God than actually being independent and forthright and forthcoming like most leaders are in America. As a matter of fact, just about everything that your motivational speaker teaches is anti-Christian. Now let me say that clearly. Just about everything that you're learning in motivational speaking is not Christian. It's actually very negative, it's derogatory, and it's narcissistic. It will continually puff you up with pride and build your ego into a super ego that even God may have to cast you aside at some excuse me, point in time where you'll fall into the temptation of Saul and David. Where Saul, after hearing people compliment David, was jealous. And if anything, you're going to find that most motivational speakers... They're going to lead you up to a place where pride is going to fill you full of something that's just a lot of hot air. But God wants us to lead in some ways. He wants us to be so dependent upon him that he can use us in the capacity to be the observant physical means with which we think we're leading. But really, it's God who's speaking and whispering into our ear, turn to the left or right. It's God directing who says to us bluntly, stand still and see my salvation. Or God saying to us legitimately, you don't know what you're doing, shut up. <laughs> so in Tozer, we're going to look at today in Leadership Video, divisions are not always bad. And one of the things that I want to examine in this is that I don't feel guilty about, at times, saying things about Calvary chapels or vineyards or some of the churches I visited, Foursquare, CMA, Christian Missionary Alliance, um, Catholic Church, because I visited them. I can speak on experience of what I've seen and heard, and I can see the positive and the negative. Chabad and Judaism, uh, reform in Judaism, um, living in Israel, I can... I can speak on certain subjects that I'm familiar with, that I know because I've lived it. That's what A.W. Tozer did, but he was also called by God to speak to and address the entire body of Christianity at large, particularly the evangelical. And that's why we're looking at some of what Tozer says, and then other things from Barry Warner, who worked with the Billy Graham Movie Association and taught a lot about leadership. But it says, when to unite and when to divide, that is the question, and a right answer requires the wisdom of the Solomon. Some settle the problem by rule of thumb. All union is good and all division bad. It's that easy. But obviously, this effortlessly way of dealing with the matter ignores the lesson of history and overlooks some of the deep spiritual laws by which men live. If good men were all for union and bad men for division or vice versa, that would simplify things for us. Or if it could be shown that God always unites and that the devil always divides, it would be easy to find our way around in this confused and confusing world. But that's not how God operates or that's not how things work. 
To divide what should be divided and unite what should be united is part of wisdom. Union of dissimilar elements is never good, even where it is possible, nor is the arbitrary division of elements that are alike. And this is as certainly true of things moral and religious as of things political or scientific. In other words, how shall two walk together except they agree? So if two people are walking together, you don't want someone who's constantly telling you you're going the wrong way. You want someone who's going to go the way you're going. And Frankly, Jesus put up with those that even though they didn't agree with him, he allowed them the mistake of making wrong choices at times because they continued to follow his way, not that they went the other way. Now, I find that interesting because that brings out a point of leadership that you have to incorporate into your life. What is God trying to get at if you're in a position of responsibility? In other words, you are accountable if you consider yourself in a leadership role. I personally don't think that you should be keeping yourself or accounting yourself as a leader. You should not look at it that way or think of it that way. I think that you should think of it as being a accountable part of what God is doing in someone else's life. What is your part and why are you necessary to be involved in someone else's life? You are going to affect them in a positive way or you're going to affect them in a negative way. What are you doing in your relationship to that other person? You see, if all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, then there is none righteous, no, not one, but everyone has gone his own way, and God has placed upon him the sins of us all. In other words, none of us are better than the other. None of us are greater, and none of us are lesser. We've all been brought onto a level playing field, meaning that all have failed. So we're all failures. Let's start off with what really leadership is all about. You are a failure. You have failed to live up to the standard that God has set for all of humanity. Ouch! So if you can keep that in mind, then helping someone else doesn't come at such a great price to your own ego or your own superego. Now, there are people that get off on helping. They are addicted to it, like uh, Tony Robbins is addicted to promoting his power of positive thinking, which is really what it's about. He's always on the positive. Now, I happen to know that there's not always a positive current running through the electrical pulses. There is a positive and a negative. You have to have both in order for electricity to operate. The same thing is true in the realm of the spirit. There has to be that faith and that lack of faith. There has to be that trust and that lack of trust. There has to be that righteousness and that sinfulness. There has to be that war within our flesh. Otherwise, if we're at peace with ourselves, we have a problem with what the scripture says. And then we have a problem with God. So, when we look at leadership, we have to know when to separate and when to combine. Sometimes it's a matter of questioning, like in a garden, as you can see behind me, I have plants. I can't put certain plants together in the same pot because the roots will choke each other out. There's only so much moisture, so much nutrients that come out of soil before you have to alimentate it or hyperalimentate it, meaning add to it in order for it to be beneficial to the plant. So if I put two competing plants together and both root systems are strong, one will choke out the other or both will die for having starved each other to death. That can happen when you don't realize that it's time to move on. We used to sing a song in the early Jesus movement that says, friends are friends forever if the Lord is the Lord of them and a friend will not say never, though welcome will not end. Though it's hard to let you go in the Father's hands we know a lifetime is not too long to live as friends. We have to recognize at times that, hey, it's not your ministry to minister to everyone or sometimes to someone. It's God's ministry that is at work both to do and to will his good pleasure around you, maybe through you, and possibly with you. But if you're not yielding to him as a servant unto your master, you're really not a leader. You're merely standing in the gap, actually in the way, 
more like the thief on the cross and the murderer on the cross, and day by day you're changing your mind which one you are. Because really, you may be there with Jesus, but you're not doing what he said to do. He said, if you would be great in the kingdom of God, learn to be the servant of all. And serving isn't leading. I'm sorry, that's not the way it works. The Spirit of God is the one we're told leads a man in the way that he should go. So we should be helping others to learn of the things of the Spirit, that they could walk in the Spirit, that they could follow the Spirit, that they could be taught by the Spirit, that they could know the Word of God as God directly speaks to the individual, and we help them to learn to listen to what God has to say, as opposed to listen to what maybe you and I have to say when we really don't know what we're doing, when we think we're leading, and in reality, we're just standing.